What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today's video is sponsored by DDPAI. Dash cam right here. We are gonna be installing this in our fifth gen 4Runner. Right there, the Dobie. But I wanna tell you guys a little story, but I wanna tell you guys a little story that happened to my two BMWs recently, and that was they were in basically a hit and run parked right in front of my house. I do have a ring doorbell in front of my house and I have blink cameras. However, it just wasn't picked up because my cars were parked out on the street. Now this was my red BMW E30. It was a 1987 and that took the brunt of the impact. I came home after a little event that I was out at and uh, to my surprise, my car had moved quite a bit, probably four to five feet, and smashed into my other car, which is my black E36. So what a lot of people don't realize is with a hit and run, even if you do have insurance on your car, you're kind of SOL as far as picking up uh, what's going to happen to your vehicle. So if you have a deductible and you have full coverage, well, you're going to be out of pocket that deductible. Unfortunately, if it's $250, $500, $1,000, whatever, that's going to have to come out of your pocket. Now I had two older cars. I had the 97 BMW, which is my black convertible. And I drive that one as a daily. However, I didn't have full coverage on that vehicle. But what I did have was uninsured motorists. Now you might be saying, well, why didn't you have full coverage? on that car well because the car is only worth like five to six thousand dollars and honestly paying a thousand plus dollars a year or whatever the price would be just didn't really make sense to me uh, mostly because I own like six cars and when I'm saying I pay a lot in insurance I'm about four hundred and fifty dollars a month for my insurance now that's a 2018 BMW M4 that's a 2016 Porsche Macan Turbo 2016 Toyota 4Runner which is right behind me, a 1997 BMW E36, this BMW E30, and I actually had one more BMW out front that was uninsured just because it was non-opt and I wasn't driving the vehicle. Now, this is what ended up happening. That car that hit and ran me actually ran into the red BMW, which I'm gonna show you pictures of right here, uh, smashed into the back and that car smashed not only the rear end and the left rear driver's quarter panel and bumper and all of that stuff, but it totally hit my black BMW as well and then slightly sideswiped the uh, bumper also. So not cool, basically a two for one deal. So when you come home to something like that, it's not fun and you gotta figure out, well, what was happening. A dash cam would have been absolutely perfect in this scenario and would have picked up the car and all of that. But I did a little bit of detective work and actually have a fairly good outcome here. Well, I was looking on the ground after that car hit my BMW and I found a BMW grill. On that grill, there was a part number, I looked it up, and it was from an E46 BMW. I then kind of went around my neighborhood checking for oil trails, right? Because sometimes you'll have oil or an antifreeze trail. So with mine, I found that grill. I searched around the neighborhood following multiple trails only to lead me basically nowhere. I went down the road a little bit further and I was actually able to find a fender liner. Finding that fender liner, I again looked up the part number, went, okay, perfect, this is from an E46 BMW. A little bit of further investigation, further down the street, I found a delaminated tire, and after that, I found little grooves from the rim. A line in the road, see that? That's a rim mark. That's what I followed in order to uh, find the car that hit and ran my E30. And there were actually police coming out of a neighborhood. It came up on the actual car itself, which was a 2007 BMW E46 that hit my 1997 E36 that hit a 1987 E30. So basically generational trauma right there, all sorts of cars smashing together and uh, a little bit of BMW love, I guess. Now this car had not busted its radiator. It actually went above the crash structure and just kind of punched out the light and the front right fender. So that was actually kind of interesting. He was able to drive home, had two blown out tires. Now the guy was actually arrested for DUI. His girlfriend's car is whose it was. And this is where it gets really weird. So did you know that if a car is insured and you are letting your friend drive your car, 
yet he doesn't have insurance, he is now considered an uninsured motorist, which is very interesting. Um, so I had a lot of issues going back and forth once I found this house. I did get a police report and all that. Police are just useless as far as getting you any information. I had to go back to that house multiple times, basically send them demand letters from my lawyer and all this stuff just so they would take responsibility on hitting my vehicle and uh, talking to the insurance company. And once they did that, two to three months later, the insurance company said, you guys are good. We're actually gonna cover that shit bag uh, that was driving that car drunk and hit my cars parked in front of my house under that insurance plan that was on the car. So it worked out actually fairly in my favor, but for most people it won't. And that's where that dash can comes in very handy. Uh, you can show what kind of car hit your car or whatnot. I hope that was kind of interesting to you, but I almost got completely screwed on that whole thing. The uninsured motorist actually didn't want to cover my car, which was really weird. And I only ended up getting the uh, California minimums, which is $5,000 property damage. So for both of my cars, one of them getting completely totaled and the other one getting hit, I was only able to get $5,000 max, which is interesting. Uh, something I didn't really realize that when you had uninsured motorists on a car, that you may only get their policies maximums, which is total trash. So that's where, again, you know, dash cams and that sort of thing come in handy. So this is a dual channel dash cam from DDPAI. We have a rear camera as well as the front camera. So you can see right here, we do have the little uh, cord. It's nice that this isn't just one piece. Sometimes you'll get one of these dash cams and when you get it, like this piece is affixed to this piece. So this is gonna make it a lot easier to run for the wiring, which is great. They do have their little instruction booklet, and a little bit of 3M VHB tape. The actual dash cam itself, which looks pretty nice. I, ooh yeah, actually I really, really like the look of that. So you can see this is the screen right here. We'll peel this off. Boom. There's a USB-C up top, a little input there. And we also have this adjustable little camera right here, which is great. Another little booklet. Actually thoroughly impressed with how much stuff this comes with. We got that USB-C cable, which is nice and long for running up from our uh, cigarette outlet. And then we have this little guy right here, which is a uh, super cool a little plastic pry tool, which makes installing this stuff into paneling very easy. It even came with this little cigarette adapter for the USB. This little installation kit is really nice. Comes with three different styles of fuse taps, right? So these kind of go into your fuse block. So we have the actual wire itself, grounding spot. This is where it pops into those little uh, fuse adapter quick connects right there and then we can run this USB-C right up into that windshield area. I'll remove my little RAM mount for a second here. You'll add a micro SD card to this as well. Before you mount the dash cam itself, you have those little electrostatic stickers. So you're gonna wanna put this in a good place where the dash cam will mount, and then you put the dash cam sticker on there. It was very nice of them to supply an extra sticker here so that you can redo it. I'm gonna go ahead and take my wire here That looks pretty good to me. Build this little cover, grab a 10 millimeter here, that way we can pry this back. You're gonna see your curtain airbag right here, so be careful with that. Okay, so Toyotas are pretty straightforward. In this example, you basically just reach right in here and you pry out, All right? Now when you do that, this whole little area is gonna become exposed. Uh, we should be able to get them to come right out in this little area from right here. Use like a coat hanger or whatever. I just have a piece of welding rod, which I'm going to put a slight little bend in, right? On our downward poke and we'll pull those wires through. So as you can see, I got that thing pulled out right here. All right, so we're gonna pull back this panel and run this little fish like I showed. Then we'll take our USB cable and tie it on to our little fish tape up and through. It's gonna be pretty easy to do with this. Just kind of tie it on there and boom, we are up and through the dash. I run this wire over. What I like to do is literally just plug it right into the termination spot. So in this example, it's the dash cam. We got that. Then we can go ahead and tuck the wire up into the headliner area right here. Trim tool, or we can just use our hand. Whatever works best. We're just gonna run it with the stock wiring harness. Pull it tight, make sure we don't have any weird slack that's gonna be 
making any vibration noises or anything like that. Pull off the fuse panel right here. You can see uh, this yellow one. ACC is the accessory, and then we need to find a 12 volt voltage constant. So accessory constant and voltage constant. So we'll put in the original fuse value right there, the 7.5, and then it came with a little two amp fuse as well. So we'll put that one on the top. This is how we're gonna do this for right now. Slide that right in there. And we are basically good to go on that connection. And then we're gonna find the other and we gotta land this ground. Now we're moving on to the rear dash cam. What I might have to do is make sort of a custom mount for this. Since the rear glass on the forerunner actually rolls down, normally you would just kind of like stick this on here or whatnot, but we're gonna have to figure out something. I think I can just stick it to this little plastic piece right here. Uh, headliner piece right here. So let's just kind of pop that's off to see what it looks like uh that comes out of this little headliner space so it just goes right up in there we should have some sort of like little backing yeah oh actually i was able to just, wow that that came out pretty dang easy right there all right so on this side of the car we're gonna go ahead and remove the handle now you could obviously run this on the driver's side i just wanted to do it on the passenger side i don't even know why actually i do know why it's because of the way this cord ran i liked it like this, I just felt like it went to the proper side this way. Okay, now that I have those two bolts out, I can just go ahead and tuck it up in the headliner right here. And we're gonna wanna make sure that it's not in the way of the airbag itself. So we wanna make sure that it's behind the airbag and not in front. Situation, again, I used my little fish and I was able to kind of put it right through here and pull that through on the side of the headliner. Accessible tray, then we can kind of pop this off and get it to the back of the car. And then I might run one more piece over here so that I can kind of span it across the back side part. I kind of just went through this little plastic piece and out of this area. And then it looks like right up here, I should be able to actually tuck in between the headliner. Yeah, so I was able to kind of pull that through. We'll get all this wire out. Just using that pry tool and we can kind of just get right up in here and tuck that wire. Now this little access piece right here, I was just able to pull back and pull out. Um, we can tuck this and get it right up above the headliner area. Now we have the end of the wire all the way to the back of the car. So now I'm gonna mount up that camera and I gotta figure out some sort of screw mount for right up here. And, and, and then right into this piece right here, which looks like it's right at about a quarter of an inch of a hole. So if I can find a decent sized screw, that'll be great. Put a little bit of Tessa tape on there. Now we can kind of tuck this up. I'm gonna tape this on to um, some of the area up here so it doesn't rattle around. One that is a good size for this. So this will literally go right into this hole right here and it will grab threads once I screw that in. back in place which is pretty straightforward you just kind of line them up give them a give them a whack into their holes camera is a little bit hard to reach but i am going to go and throw an sd card inside here um it does take one sd card so i'm throwing in a little 32 gig noticeable from my driver's side as you can see doesn't really get in the way it's not really distracting or anything which is great so i'll go drive around get a little bit of footage on this thing we'll export it kind of see how the quality looks on the camera and uh yeah kind of go over the that whole situation there is obviously an app for your phone as well that you can download and uh, sync to bluetooth so you can get it off that also um which is pretty cool but uh, I usually like taking out the SD card and just throwing it right into my computer. I kind of find that to be the, uh, the fastest way in my opinion. There are a couple settings on there. You can change time, date, all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get it going. All right, so, so far I like the dash cam. Uh, I'm able to switch between the front and the rear view very easily. And it hasn't just like gone off into an emergency mode. So let's hit the speed bump fairly quickly. We're going 30. You know, it didn't panic or anything like that. Um, I do have it in a low sensitivity mode. Let's crank up the sensitivity. Let's go sensitivity, recording, 
sensitivity, we will try it high. All right, let's see if we can get in emergency mode now. Pretty easy to, uh, to change, but we might get it with just a quick hit. No, even with that, still good. I'm on King suspension also, so there could be that, but yeah. It's not excessively uh, just going off and uh, making noise at me, which is cool. Came out really good. Uh, I think the quality on it looks great. The rear view obviously has just a slight bit of reflection from where it rolls down. Uh, the camera is a little bit set back, so maybe I could make a different custom mount to get that one a little bit further. But overall, I'm really impressed with the dynamic range of the video. It's a pretty bright day out, and uh, even the sky looks nice. It looks nice and blue with the street still looking good. It doesn't look washed out or anything like that um, going under bridges and that sort of thing it also looked really good i'll leave a link to the product down in the description thanks for watching guys if you made it to the end please make sure to like share and subscribe uh, let me know a comment if you've ever had any experiences with uh, hit and runs or anything where you've needed a dash cam maybe you haven't had one or have had one and drop your experience below later and wrench on